Thank you. Well said. Yes. And then you look, and then it's, well, what are the requirements for the confession? Well, lo and behold, the Ten Commandments show up. And then, by the way, there's subcategories of the Ten Commandments. And all this is written down in something called an examination of conscience, and it's readily available online or in print. And what I do, because I'm, one, anal retentive, and two, just have a short attention span, I literally print that off, and I'll go, yep, did that one. Shouldn't have done that one, did that one. Make some notes. I'll go into confession with my cheat sheet, so to speak. Um, because part of confession is you're supposed to be thorough, right? Now, if you intentionally forget about something, or merciful God is there, but circle back later on and offer it up at the next confession. So now I got my checklist, and again, to your point, I can't say what works for everybody. My friends that are regular confession goers share the same experience with me, but that's my story, man. Well, there's more, uh, because you go to retreats. Not everybody goes to retreats. How did that start, and what impact has, had, has that had on you? I'm sure it's second to confession, but it's still probably. Well, at retreat, at retreat, you have the opportunity for confession, spiritual direction, but in the end, and this is what was so darn scary for me, and you and I have had this conversation, particularly since it's your guy's profession, you got to be quiet, right? Um, so there's different types of retreat. This one that I'm talking about that are most impactful is, is are the uh, silent retreats. And usually, generally, you leave work at noon on Thursday, you drive to wherever your retreat is, and uh, you meet everybody. Um, mostly they're um, same sex, so it's a bunch of dudes in our case going to retreat. And you have a nice dinner together, and then you're quiet afterwards until Sunday noon. Does anybody talk to you, or are you just... Uh, long, you you go to mass. Like performance. Um, some uh, I just got a note from a wonderful young lady who said I go on a hermitage retreat where she literally pulls herself out of the world fast for three days and doesn't talk to anybody. I'm actually intrigued. I've never done that before, but I'm super intrigued by it. This one is actually you eat pretty well. At least the place I go, you eat pretty well. Um, but there's every day there's mass. Uh, there's a rosary, there's an opportunity for confession, there's opportunity for spiritual direction, there's talks, so the day's filled, but you can also say, you know what, I want to go for a walk, but what you can't do is talk, and the silence, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, but I'm underscoring it from my personal testimony, the silence is unbelievably powerful, unbelievably powerful. How? I don't know, man. And what, when you say <laughs> powerful, um, what is you know I moved just thinking about it just the the reality of you feel closer to God absolutely you, yeah I mean one I just like to knock out confession right away at the beginning of them but you're sitting around with a bunch of dudes who in most cases mine's a little bit of an executive retreat it's kind of a high level treat actually there's been congressmen on it and a lot of judges and uh, executives of, of large organizations um, so we kind of got all the common executive problems, you know? So it just, even though you don't talk to people, the great irony is literally I meet some of my best friends on silent retreat, right? That's what I was going to, everybody <laughs> talks about relationships, the important relationships, and I thought, oh, it must be tough if nobody talks, but you just said, you're wrong on that one. Oh. Well, um, one of my friends, Mike Gratz, I don't think he'll have a problem with me bringing up his name. Uh, I didn't know him at this first retreat, and he comes up to me afterwards, and he goes, hey, uh, he's an Air Force officer, so we got the military thing going. He goes, uh, you and I should get together for mass and lunch. And I literally don't know this dude from Adam, right? I'm like, uh, okay. So now, every pretty much every quarter, at least twice a year, we'll get together for, and he's a high-level attorney downtown, very successful, extraordinarily generous, huge supporter of Ballpark Day Faith. Um, My assumption is you feel a connection with anybody uh, who's there because... Their faith and their experience, relationship right? yeah. is that there have to be something. Let me common. make the analogy to the Marine Corps. You guys know that I'm a Marine. I spent eight years on active duty, seven in the reserves. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps Reserve. I'm not active anymore. I have an instant bond when somebody tells me that they're a Marine. Not surprisingly, right? I mean, you know the shared suffering that we all go through, right? Um, then somebody tells me they're Catholic. It's a little bit of the same thing. Now, we're all Catholic to some degree, right? Um, how Catholic are you? I don't go into all those questions, they kind of naturally come out. 
some of the fundamental questions are what's your prayer life like? Are you what's your sacramental life like? Meaning, are you knocking down confession? How often are you going to to uh, to receive the Eucharist? Right. Some people go daily. I think. Are you a daily communicant at this point? Yeah. Well, easier to do when you're in the retirement stage. But you're going to help us make this so popular that it'll be a full time job. That's a, <laughs> that's a subject for another episode. Well, may, may I just ask this? You're a high powered guy. You're a gifted guy. You're a hero. You serve. Um, take a word, pick a word if you want, because you can't do all of them, but here's what's on my heart. <clears throat> Suffering, humility, uh, anything that you want to say and relate it to your faith. How do you, do, how do you stay humble? Um, I don't, unfortunately, and that's part of the challenge that, that I got. I don't think I'm that humble, quite frankly. I may put on airs that way, but um, those are the two words, I, probably not coincidentally, that I would have chosen because um, uh, I love the line that uh, there is no love without sacrifice, right? Uh, when I think of, um, think of you, um, your guys' relationships, or whoever's watching, right? Think of your relationships of who do you really love? Who are you really closest to? And it's, I, I'm, I'm quite confident that the answer will be those people who have either sacrificed for you or that you have sacrificed for, right? That's why we have immediate bonds with our family members because being a father or a brother or a sister or a mother, it's all about sacrifice, I think. Right? Yeah. But yet in the midst of it, I sense in you, Bob, trust and surrender in our Lord Jesus. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I appreciate I mean, I it. I mean, I'm flattered. For all of us, yeah, right. I'm flattered. You <laughs> know, I hear, I hear that, and all I for me, but all, all I think about is that I don't do that well enough. But yes, I, I, I'm flattered that you, you see that in me. So I'm, I'm heartened by it, son. Um, and the great leaders that I see around town, uh, you know, I've talked about them before. Um, I've got a, a Mike Gratz I put in that category. Uh, John Barranco is the chief equity officer. I think he even got a promotion recently at Wells Fargo. Um, super humble, super devout. Uh, Mike Lovell, we've talked about Mike Lovell before. His um, love of the Eucharist, his prayer. In prayer, and and uh, he goes to adoration regularly. Uh, sacramental life. These are the guys that these are the guys I really respect and want to be like. But yes, you want. I give you both words. I won't give you two words. I'll throw them back. In. Humility and sacrifice. And there's so much depth there from a virtue standpoint. I think. I don't know for sure, but I think, you know, essentially humility functions as the, the king of all virtues, right? Um, but yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Anything else from you? How much spirituality is there in the Marines? Um, how many Marines are like you? How rare is it? Or how do the Marines accept or, I don't want to use the word deal with or accept, uh, spirituality, it can be Catholic or it can be any faith. To me, there's a huge parallel, uh, and it probably goes back to that, that sacrifice term, um, right? Because we sacrifice so much to be Marines that it's not uncommon for a lot of um, the, the, the Catholic Church and the Marines to draw the same kind of person. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, and um, I used to say the rosary with a group full of my Marines. Um, when we were deployed to the Mediterranean during the first Gulf War. Um, the most impactful officer I've ever served with was a Catholic priest um, because he sacrificed more than any of the other officers that I ever saw. Um, and his sacrifice being? Uh, he was up early. He was a Vietnam veteran. He was an enlisted Marine, a uh, Vietnam veteran. Uh, Father Rochford, Dennis Rochford was his name. Uh, he since passed away. He um, um, went through can't imagine what he went through. He was at Way City, which was one of the most devastating battles during the Vietnam War. He was a radio man. Uh, the actions that he and his platoon and company did are renowned in the Marine Corps. And then joined the, obviously became a priest. But he was up early, I mean he was 50-something, I was 20-something, and I wouldn't get up as early as that guy in PT, physical training, you know, do our, on the flight deck, right? Um, Again, excuse my French, but the guy was a badass priest, you know, and that is extremely attractive. To me. And quite frankly, I think that concept is extremely attractive to us. You know, before we were the cameras were on, we were talking about Trevor Williams, the pitcher for the Pirates. Um, this guy is super sharp, but incredibly humble. Right? So yeah, it's that 
dual sacrifice of that simultaneously Catholic, but here's one, my former commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Gann. Wife just died right before we went on deployment of cancer. Gets deployed, he's the battalion commander for 1,500 Marines during wartime. Comes back, retires from the Marine Corps, becomes a priest. Just retired from the priesthood a couple of years ago. So yeah, there's something there that is common, and I, I think it's, and my best leaders aren't, you know, you guys, I say you guys, Civilians generally think of us Marines as command and control, in your face yelling. Yes, that, that would be it. Yeah, you nailed it. Uh, and that's cool during the drill instructor period, right, where you got to break the Marine down. Um, but that's not the real leaders. The real leaders are the ones that, yeah, that you and you guys know. It. You, every all of us professionally have worked for somebody that you'd run through a brick wall for because you know they do the same thing for you. So and that's the common. Home around this time. Not necessarily yeah. the way it's presented in movies. And on TV, but it's good to know. I I don't unless you have something left. We always try to finish with you, our guest, just saying whatever you want to say. It's it's your journey, and however you want to finish. Yeah, I would say thank you very much. Thanks for asking me on. By the way, I didn't say Honored that. To have you. Um, I would say uh, to wrap essentially what we said here. Pull that string. Everybody's being called to some degree. Um, be not be not afraid. Excuse me. Be not afraid. There's a reason that that's said 365 times in the Bible, I'm told. Right? One for every day of the year. Be not afraid. Pull that string. Seek out, but be humble and know that to love means to sacrifice. Well, the only thing I would say is we're just going to say so long. It's, it's been Homer's desire that if one person can be touched by someone's faith story, then our purpose has been uh, accomplished, and I certainly think. Uh, oh, well, by the way, it has been got to finish. Well, there you go, ballpark. This <laughs> there, there's the radio genius <laughs> in him, right? You did a super job. We call it my faith with Homer and Pip. Bob Seamy, he's one of the best, and he does live his faith. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, Brent Young, behind the camera, our producer extraordinaire. See you next time.